December 2nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Revelation chapter 21 from the New Testament. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and earth had ceased to exist and the sea existed no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, made ready like a bride adorned from her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look! The resident of God is among human beings. He will live among them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death will not exist anymore, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the former things have ceased to exist. And the one seated on the throne said, Look, I am making all things new. Then he said to me, Write it down, because these words are reliable and true. He also said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the one who is thirsty I will give water free of charge from the spring of the water of life. The one who conquers will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But to the cowards, unbelievers, detestable persons, murderers, the sexually immoral, and those who practice magic spells, idol worshippers, and all those who lie, their place will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. That is the second death. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven final plagues came and spoke to me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. So he took me away in the spirit to a huge majestic mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. The city possesses the glory of God. Its brilliance is like a precious jewel, like a stone of crystal clear jasper. It has a massive high wall with 12 gates, with 12 angels at the gates, and the names of the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel are written on the gates. There are three gates on the east side, three gates on the north side, three gates on the south side, and three gates on the west side. The wall of the city has twelve foundations, and on them are the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. The angel who spoke to me had a golden measuring rod with which to measure the city and its foundation stones and wall. Now the city is laid out as a square, its length and width the same. He measured the city with the measuring rod at 1,400 miles. Its length and width and height are equal. He also measured its wall, 144 cubits according to human measurement, which is also the angels. The city's wall is made of jasper and the city is pure gold like transparent glass. The foundations of the city's wall are decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation is jasper the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth carnelian, the seventh crystallite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysopes, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. And the twelve gates are twelve pearls. Each one of the gates is made from just one pearl. The main street of the city is pure gold like transparent glass. Now I saw no temple in the city because the Lord God, the all-powerful, and the Lamb are its temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it because the glory of God lights it up and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light and the kings of the earth will bring their grandeur into it. Its gates will never be closed during the day and there will be no night there. They will bring the grandeur and the wealth of the nations into it, but nothing ritually unclean will ever enter into it, nor anyone who does what is detestable or practices falsehood, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. God, it's just been this year that I've started to truly understand what it means to glorify you. I always understood perhaps not completely, but got the general idea that we are your children 
and that our actions and our words and our deeds reflect upon this bigger picture. But I never truly understood how everything I do is for your glory and everything done in this world is done for your glory. This year, I, I seem to be getting a, a lot better, understanding more and more that it's not about us, that it's all about you, that you created this world to glorify you. And then according to the Bible, three chapters in, Satan and sin came into this world and completely distracted us from glorifying you. And then I kind of want to say halfway through our history, but I, I don't know how long that process is. Um, but into our history came your son and his dying on the cross for our sins and the raising of him back up to heaven was this glory that that shone across all the world and across all people and everyone had an opportunity to glorify you God and, and be in a relationship with you because of this incredible sacrifice of your son for the forgiveness of our sins that were separating us from you and then we go on through a period of history we don't know how long that's going to be into Revelation, which is the end of our history as we know it. And three chapters before the end, Satan and sin is, is destroyed and taken out of this world, just like it came into this world three chapters in. And here we are, two chapters to the, to the end of the Bible, not the end of our times, but to the end of the Bible. And all glory has returned to you. There is no more distraction. There are no more tears or hurt or pain to distract us from anything but to glorify you and I think what amazes me the most God and it shouldn't amaze me about you because you do that for me every single day but one of the commentaries I was reading talked about how you didn't just return us to the original glory uh, you didn't return us to that original kingdom, that Eden. You returned us in the end of times to something bigger and better and more glorious. Again, all for your glory. God, I can't imagine all of this truly happening. I know it's your word and I know it's the truth. But to actually think that we get to be in a place that's absolutely stunning beyond anything that we can imagine. And our sole purpose to be in that place is to glorify you. God, it just is amazing to me because here on earth we are so distracted. We're distracted by entertainment and we're distracted by uh, our choices. We're distracted by uh, people and we're distracted by money and all of these other idols that we have down here. To imagine a time where I get to completely worship you for all times without interruption God it's just amazing to me I wish I had that now but I don't not yet so in the meantime God allow me the best possible way according to your will and according to your timing to follow in your path for me Allow the people listening to this video to do the same. You have amazing plans for all of us. And even though we will be distracted by things here on earth, because that's the way it's been since the third chapter in, um, we know that we can intentionally focus on the path you have for us. We know that you will give us the strength, you will empower us, and you will give us the desire to please you. God, that's all I want to do here on earth. And I know that I can't perfect that until the second to last chapter uh, when I get to be up in heaven, truly glorifying you. Allow my time here on earth to glorify you, the complete amount that you created me to do so, God. Allow me to understand better and deeper what it means to glorify our maker, to give you all honor, to give you all praise to humble myself before you. God, I pray all this in your son's name. Jesus Christ, amen.